Genesis chapter 19, chapter 19, we, we fast forward it. We're going to go back, but we, we, we decided to fast forward. And then we're going to moonwalk back after Genesis chapter 19. I want to read verses 1 through 4, but I want you to read the entire chapter in its entirety when you go home. Genesis chapter 19, that's the first book in the Bible. You ain't going to be doing all that, you know, looking and licking your fingers and turning. First book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 19. If you have the King James Version, you'll find these holy, divine, and inspired words. It's going to freak some of y'all out today. And there came two angels to Sodom. Oh, we got it there, but we're right in the hole. And the angels came to Sodom at evening. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords. Notice Lord is not capitalized. We're referring to angels. He said, Turn, I pray you, into your servant's house. And I want you to tarry. I want you to stay all night and, and, and wash your feet. And you shall rise up early and go on your way. And they said, no, Mr. Lot, but, but we will abide in the streets all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned into him and entered into his house. And he made them a feast and did uh, bake cake and unleavened bread, and they did eat. But verse 4 said, but before they lay down, before they went to bed, the men of the city... Even the men of Sodom compassed the house round, both young and old men, and, and all the people from every corner, and they called it, where are them brothers at? Where are the men which came into you this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. Now, let me help you just for y'all out there. Know is an intimate term. They said, bring them out so we can have sexual relations with the brothers. Yeah, I'm just going to make it, put it right out there. And, and, and then Lot went out to the door and shut the door after him and said, I pray you, brethren, said, don't, don't do this wicked stuff. And then he just, I don't, I'm, it, oh, man, I can choke Lot. Look at verse 8. He said, behold, I have two daughters which ain't known to man. They ain't ever been touched. He said, I pray you, I'm going to bring them out to you. And what daddy you know going to say? Now do what to them, whatever you want to. But only to these men do nothing. He said, for that's why they came and that's why they're under my roof. And they said, stand back. They wasn't calling James and Petra. They said, stand back. And they said again, look, this one fella came in to sojourn and, and he would needs now be a judge. They said, now, since you won't let us have him, we're going to deal with you worse than we're going to deal with them. They said, lot, if you won't let us sleep with them, brother, it's you. I'm in the text, y'all. Don't look at me funny. I'm right there. Even Lot, and they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the dough. You see how sick these are? They're going to break the dough to get a man. But the men put forth their hand, the angels, and they pulled Lot into the house, and they shut the dough. <laughs> and then the angels smote the men with blindness so they couldn't see. Only way to stop these rascals, both small and great. So they wearied themselves. They, they, only thing that stopped them, they couldn't find the door. And the men said to Lot, the angel said, Look, man, has, has thou any besides here, son-in-law, and your sons and your daughters? He said, Whatsoever thou hast in this city, bring them out of this place. For we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. He said, And the Lord hath sent us here to destroy it because everybody going freaky dicky. And Lot went out and spake unto his son-in-laws, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get up out this place, for the Lord going to destroy this city. But look at the response. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his son-in-law. They said, Lot, quit playing. Go and sit down. The word of God. As we seek to embrace the God-filled life, we have been focusing in in these series of sermons on letting everything go. Remember, we started week one. We talked about 
letting go of your shallowness. Shallowness in prayer, shallowness in Bible reading, shallowness in commitment. Then week two, Sister Ruth Smith, we talked about letting go of your selfishness. We talked about, Sister Cummings, selfishness in our desires, selfishness in our decisions, selfishness in our devotions. And on today, we want to talk about letting go of your sinfulness. Letting go of your sinfulness. And most of you might think, uh, 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 Jermaine, that the key word is sinfulness, but the key word is actually letting go. You see, we want God to take things away from us. Take our vices. Take this taste out of my mouth. Take this beer from me. Take this cigarette from me. Take this weight from me. And what God is saying, no, baby, you got to let it go. Because if I take everything, that doesn't require nothing from you. You don't have to sacrifice anything if I'm going to take everything from you. You remember when we started this sermon series and we talked about how to catch a monkey. Well, this morning we're going to see the difference that clutching a few bananas make. All right? And, and to do this, we are going to fast forward and we're going to look at the tragic end of Lot's life. Once again, read chapter 19 in its entirety at home a little bit later. Now, I will be, for some of my points, making references to scriptures that we didn't read. We only read verses 1 through uh, 14, but I'll be referencing some other things, okay? In Genesis chapter 19, <coughs> we find Lot sitting in the city gate. He's sitting there, all right? which meant that he had indeed worked his way into civic affairs, okay? He, he had become, as it were, a member of the city council. Literally, he was a judge. Instead of being separated from the world, he was immersed in Sodom. The Bible says, 2 Corinthians 6, 4, it said, Come ye out from among them and be ye separate, for you are holy. Yeah, see, Sister McGinnis, it's, it's, it's nothing wrong with the church being in the world. That's where it should be. But you got a very different problem when the world gets into the church. Yeah, see, there's nothing wrong with a ship being in the middle of the ocean. The problem happens when the ocean gets inside the ship. Yeah. So God says, come ye out from among them and be ye separate. For I indeed am holy and you are holy. And instead of being separated from the world, this boy was immersed inside him. And although he seemed to have everything that he desired, he still wasn't happy. See, my brothers, my sisters, and I'm not telling you nothing. You all know this. Everything that glitters is not gold. Every good thing is not a God thing. We have to be discerning enough, Andrew, and careful enough to detect a curse that's wrapped up with blessing package. Y'all got me? See, see, they make suspenders. They make gold, and they also make gold field. And if you got gold field, you better not be caught in the rain because your fingers and your neck going to turn green. They make diamonds and they make diamondiques. And depending how the sun is shining and a quick flash, you can look at it and won't know the difference. So you got to be discerning enough to say, yeah, this, this, this looks like a blessing, but it's actually a curse on the inside. This boy throws the bright lights of Vegas. The Hollywood Hills captured his imagination. But as I said, although he seemed to have everything he desired, the boy still wasn't happy. And that's why the Bible says the eyes of a man are never satisfied. Never satisfied. God told David, said, look, David, if it was more wise, I'd have gave you more. Why did you have to take Bathsheba? He said, because Bathsheba is built like Bathsheba. 
I know, I know he wasn't satisfied. I know he wasn't satisfied because 2 Peter 2.8 says, For that righteous man dwelleth among them in seeing and hearing. It said he was vexed, which meant he was tormented. His righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Let me tell you, you can have, let me tell you, you, you can have money, but money came by you sleep. Michael Jackson had all the money in the world, but he couldn't go to sleep. And Conrad said, for $150,000 a month, I can put you to sleep, Mike. And all them people talking about, oh, Conrad was wrong. Listen, if Mike would have paid me $150,000 a month, I'd have put him to sleep too. That's a lot of money to put somebody to sleep. So, so, so the point I'm making, you can have everything, but you still can be miserable with everything. So here a lot is was miserable in the midst of a godless, wicked world. But guess what? The boy stayed there. Lot could have went back to Bethel, Sister Rhonda, which means house of God, so he could have left Sodom, went back to the house of God, but he stayed in Sodom. He could have, uh, uh, Mayor uh, 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 Gray, he could have went to Haran, which was a commercial center, on the main highway linking the Mediterranean coast to the Euphrates River, he could have went there, but the boy stayed inside him. He could have, Reverend Ernst, he could have went back to Ur, which was one of the most significant and prosperous cities of its time. It was 10 miles west of the Euphrates River under the, near the Persian Gulf, 200 miles from Baghdad. He could have went there, but he decided to stay in Sodom. And why did he decide to stay? The Bible said, Andrew, is because he chose to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. But guess what? Seasons change. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You running after them shapes? We running after this. Shapes change. Believe me, I know mine did. Do you know anybody like Lot? See, sinfulness may bring you momentary pleasures and satisfaction, but it leaves a lasting and devastating impact on you. Let's look at the impact of sin. First of all, in verses 6 and 7, point 1, sinfulness impacts your friends. That's why your mama and daddy are careful about who you hang around with, young folk. They ain't trying to cramp your style. They trying to help you out. They ain't trying to cramp your style. Some of you ain't got nothing no way. You ain't even, some of you ain't even got a wag. You can take that S off. <laughs> Verse 6 and 7. Now, I'm right here. It impacts your friends. Watch this. After dinner, Lot heard a commotion at the door of his house, and he decided to go check it out. And he went and investigated Andrew, and he saw a gay demonstration taking place in the street. I'm right there in the text. They tell you the men, young and old, walking around, talking about I want some brothers. Men, they surrounded the house and demanded that he turn the two strangers over to them so we can have homosexual relations with them. I'm in the text, y'all. I'm in the text. I mean, I don't care if you like it or not. To which he replied, he said, no, my friends. Now, I know the King James Version says brethren, but if you look at the other translations, he said, oh, no, my friends. Now, wait a minute. Wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. Friends? Men who wanted to have sex with your guests are your friends? These were men that Lot did business with. These were men, Andrew, that he golfed with. They sat on the city council together. They were his boys. They were his homies. And they wanted to sleep with his guests. Who they knew were men. Then Lot did the, it's quiet in here, Jesus. <laughs> then Lot did the unthinkable. This rascal offered his two 
virgin daughters in the place of the strangers who was under his roof and said, I got two young precious girls. Do whatever you want.